Okay, so that's those bits done. Um, all still a little bit wet, okay? So don't worry too much. All we do, take quite a bit of thinness into the old colour cup. So we're probably taking about half a mil in there. Okay, and then just for argument, so what we're going to do is going to take a drop of black, flat black paint. Okay, I'm mixing it in with that green that we've already done. So make sure you get, if you've got any dry bits on the top, around this top area, make sure they're all mixed in and what we want to do is make a dirty colour okay and what do you want more black than green so if you need a little drop more but what it is it's got to be thin okay so what you're basically making here is dirty wash for want of a better word okay now you could obviously use something like the pro modelers wash or a turpentine wash or something like this but i want it to be a little bit more thinned out and a little bit more even if you like because I want this to be sort of a hue effect rather than a direct weathering. Okay, quite happy with that. Blast through all your paint because obviously you're going to have some paint left over so make sure you put all that through until your dirty stuff comes out and you might be able to see that down there on the close up between the two. This is our dirty grimy colour and what we're going to do, just lightly blow in around some of the details. So it's a bit like post shading this, okay? So you just popping it in but we want it to be a shadow effect rather than a direct effect if you know what I mean um, so it's just like a shadow something I'm going to turn the air pressure down a moment to about 20 psi so always pull your trigger when you're pulling your uh, releasing the air pressure and that'll give you a true indication so we're just going to pop around and pick out so if you like this is really just like pre-shading in reverse, hence we call it post shading. Okay, and we're just picking out little bits and pieces, and you might be able to pick it up on the camera there. We get that type of effect, which is just that sort of grimy type of look to it. And in fact, this is probably a good show of how it looks. So you have this type of effect. So obviously, top one you can see, got a grimy type of look to it, all the rest of it. Bottom one's pretty much clear. So we're gonna do the same for the underside, okay? And what we're gonna do is certainly things like this little chappy here. We can go around and put in grime areas where people would walk and stand to roughly work out where your crew figures are and you can put them in. And don't be afraid on the floors to make them quite wet because it'll dry in. So where feet go and scuffs and bits and pieces and then just finally give it a bit of a blast all over and if you have got any areas where perhaps it's uh, a little bit strong it'll just help blend it in. Okay, so let's just put a little bit down here, quite random. Okay, a bit tricky on the top one obviously because picking it out but that's where crew would be. You don't want that to happen, shake it around too much. There we go, that's quite nice. And then perhaps just a, a little bit on those side rails, it'll just fall over, it'll just tone them down just a fraction, make them a little bit more nice. Now that's going to take a little bit longer to dry than the actual uh, paintwork does because obviously it's thinning the paint and stuff like that. So don't touch your model for a little bit until you're all happy that it's totally dry, because otherwise what will happen is you come along and put your finger through it. Okay. And then finally, just a quick blast all over. A couple of pushes, once it's dry, there we go, that's that done. Okay, so we'll let those bits totally dry, then we can start picking out the detail and bringing all this cockpit area together. Okay, so those bits have all been drying now. Um, so what we can start to do is start picking out some of the, the details on them and things like that and doing a little bit more weather into it. Now, as I said, if you have put on quite a little bit of thinners, make sure it's really, really dry before you come along and start doing this type of thing. Otherwise, what's gonna happen is you're literally gonna start touching it, leaving fingerprints in there and everything else like that. So, okay, what we're gonna do, we're gonna take a little bit of the uh, gold, bum, uh, gold um, sorry, uh, bolt gun metal even, can never say that word. Okay, now you could use any of the, the Tamiya 
colours for that. Uh, XF56 I think it is, is obviously quite a nice one. So what we're going to do, we've got a little flat brush here. A little bit of Kijuna roll. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to start with a floor, whether in that. So what you've got here, we've got some flat. We're just going to rub all that off down here. Okay, 90% is off. Okay, starting with the little pedals and things like that. So we bring you in nice and close with this one. Okay, what we're going to try and do is just give them a bit of a, a light brush over and it'll just take the paint off of those. Okay, and then we're just going to pick out some of this metal checker plating that we've put on and some of the little metal areas and we're just adding little scuffs to it. Just on like that. Okay, so that gives us this type of chipping and effect and say when you catch it in the light you see it a little bit better. Okay, so what we do, we take a little bit more. 90% off and all we're gonna do now is just run it around this checker flooring. Just lightly over the top and it'll just raise the detail a little bit, pick out any details and that is still a little bit soft if I'm honest. So we're just being a bit careful and we paint around this, but there again, you might be able to see it showing through quite nicely on that one. Okay, and then exactly the same on these top parts. We're going to come around and we're just going to lightly brush in and it'll just lift them up and give them a little bit of life, a little bit of scuffing as if it would have done in real life. Okay, all around the edges. Then what we'll do, we'll start going around in a moment with some of the black stuff to uh, actually bring some of the switches and dials all up to life and things. But it'll just help get this going. Now this rear part back here is going to be all black anyway, so I won't worry about that too much. Okay, so we've done that. I'm going to do a tiny bit on this bit of flooring just down here, just to bring some of the details up to life. I'm going to say it all gives it that sort of grubby type look to it and then by the time we go around and pick out some of the nicer colours hopefully it'll all look very very nicely. So there we go we're just going to pop around some of this just very lightly flicking over and it is just a little flicking movements okay and as I say it's one of those things because you're doing it with silver when you move it all of a sudden you can probably like on the close-up you can see it there so it comes through when you're doing it just flat you don't really see it. Okay, same on here. And don't worry about if you're running out of paint and pushing harder, because obviously all your chipping and scuffs would be different in different areas and everything else like that. So don't worry too much about those. Little foot plate. And there we go. Now the side we've got little bits of ribbing going on here as well. So we're just going to pop around and do them as well. And just try to give it a bit of life. So that's what you're trying to do. You're just trying to give it an effect rather than it looking really, really strong. Um, you know, and then showing up, as you can probably see on there. And don't forget, this is all doped inside here, so it would show through um, scrapes and that that have been taken off of the, the paint on the inside. I know some of them, the early Mark 1s, they were like metal colour on the inside anyway from the skin where it was put on. Uh, the Mark II's had a little bit more metal on them. So as I say, first pass very, very lightly. And there we go, it gives us something like that. So it's saying, quite a nice effect. Job done. So we'll let those bits dry off and we'll give the, the brush a bit of a clean now. When you're cleaning out your brush, make sure you get all the silver off if you're doing flat black especially, because otherwise it shows through a nightmare. So make sure it's a nice clean brush, pop it in a little bit of water afterwards, is always a good one. There we go. Okay, so now what we can do is start picking out some of the little bits of black. So you might need a, a finer brush for this as well. So I've got a nice fine brush over here. So move that out of the way. Okay, so what we're going to do now is pop a little bit of paint into the cat. 
so we've got a bit more control and all we're going to do right now is go around and pick out all the little boxes and things on here in black so they show up nicely and then obviously we've got color photo etch which is in black as well it's going to go over the top of them so we're just going to pop around and do these Okay, so things are a little bit wet, so we don't want to go around grabbing them too hard, but basically we've been around and we've painted all the black areas, um, as you can see on the actual framework. We've gone along, we've put the little harness on the front for the canopy there. Done a little bit more weathering, we put the extra uh, magazines in for the guns, uh, they're in there and everything else, and we've installed the stool. So that's all the, the little bits out of the way for that one. We've also gone around and put a little bit of photo etch uh, and a few little pieces onto here. So we've got little photo etch dials um, around for the cockpit area up the front and everything else like that. So that's really getting those together. Now what we've got here, we've got a little cover which is going to fit just under here. So what we'll do, we'll just pop this one in whilst we think of it. So that's going to go down in here. Quite a nice click fit. I must admit, the actual entire kit so far has gone together extremely well. Um, I've had no real fit issues or any of the normal problems we have with the kits, um, perhaps with little flash ejector pin marks and all things like that. They've all gone together extremely well. So okay, we've got that in, so what we can actually do now is sort of bring these parts together. So as you can see, what happens is you've got a pin underneath here and these flat plates as how it goes in. Now I've already glued in, to be honest, this half. So if I glue in the second half, so what you do, you've got these plates that poke out at the bottom and then there's a pin. So what you do, you just slide those in the pin pushes the opposite direction and holds it all together. And there we go. Now, before we do this, as I said, spoke about it earlier, done the photo etch uh, work for the, the radios and everything. They've got to go in the back. They will go in afterwards. So what we'll do, I'm pop to the underside where you can't see what's going on. Okay, I'm just gonna touch and let it flow. Plenty of glue for this one. because obviously what happened as well is the glue will help join it all together because it will soften some of the plastic. So there we go, that's those in. Give them a bit of a squeeze to make sure we're all sitting. So we're just going to hold that front part together. So I'm going to do just grab a clamp. quite as big as this, but draw these clamps here, they're a little bit fiddly to do one-handed. So okay, we can just leave that out to one side just for a minute. Okay, let that just harden off just a, a second. And what we can actually do is move on to the instrument panel. Now the instrument panel itself, you're doing this via the kit, you've got a decal system which is going to go on the back and they'll show through. Because we're using the photo etch, what we need to do is remove the raised um, surface of this. So we're going to go across the diagonal. So this higher part is all going to come off. Now you could use a knife and sort of scrape it and just chip it all off like that. Another one is a little favorite of mine. I've got this little tool here and you can sand them all out just like so. Or the really quick way is grab yourself a giant real raspy file, okay? And just give it a bit of a carve over and take it all off. So start with a really, really quite a coarse file I think this is probably around about uh, 100 grit, if that. It's very rough, whatever it is. Okay, and we're just taking off all the raised detail so the actual parts can get in there and get onto it. So what we do, we wanna hold it just like this. Keep it flat. Take it down. 
until it's all gone. There's a bit done. Across to the other side. That's nicely done. Okay, what we do. Keep an eye on our thickness, make sure we get too thick. Okay, we're gonna come in, do this side as well. Okay, all gone, and then we can just pop him with a slightly smoother file. Let's take all those off. All done. Very easy, straightforward job. Covered in dust. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is paint this black, so we're gonna Put some a uh, little bit of tack on the black on the back of it. So we can just take this one off of here for the moment. Okay, pop this on the back like this. Okay, grab ourselves some black paint. Make sure that doesn't fall off. Okay, and then what we do? We just give this a coat of black. We're going to do this all over, apart from the very, very top part that pokes out, because obviously that's the glass work for the heads up display. So, what we do, we do the underside for it. I say heads up display, that's me talking modern terminology, I mean gun sight really in this case. And, and there we go, so we just pop around like that. Okay, now we're going to do the back as well, purely to make it thicker and give it a a solid look otherwise it might look a little bit clear okay so we just pop that on like so okay then so if we get on with the instrument panel now what we've actually done here is you said we did this one black already and you might be able to see uh, on the close-up as well that uh, we've got the first part on there so it's just the black part let's say it's self adhesive so it sticks straight on check you with your instructions because sometimes what they uh, tend to do it's finding himself. What they tend to do is um, sometimes they have different instrument panels for different type variants of aircraft. So make sure you've got the right one. Okay, so as we've said with these before, try and keep them somewhat flat. We'll just snip this one out. Like so. As I say, try and keep it as flat as possible. Some nice, good, sharp, thin scissors should cut through the metal sprues quite nicely. Okay. And then all we're going to do, we come along and we're just going to place this one right on top of the other one. So the dials are all showing through. Okay, and then a bit of a push down. Now these are the self-adhesive ones. Now if you trust them, uh, and on something like an instrument panel, you'll probably be okay. The thing is, if you... Um, if it's on something like a bend or something like that, I would recommend using probably like something like a super glue or something like that, purely because they have a habit of um, actually bending slightly and pinging off uh, when they sort of give up. So we've got that one on there now. So now we've just got to put on this little top one here. So that there again, gently snipping them off. Off. Okay. Again, the trouble is also with the self adhesive ones, once they're on, they tend to stick down. So, if you lightly place them where you want them to go, and then you can just sort of nudge the edges around a little bit to get it to exactly where it's meant to be, like that one. There's that one in there, just like that. Okay, then the one underneath we've got this one, this one, this one doesn't have any self adhesive because we're going to have to stick that one on, but it has got one that goes on top which has got self adhesive, so we'll stick the top part on before we glue it into position. So we just snip these out. Okay, 
and just hold the edges and we can get it in. That's that one pushed on. Now because these are printed you have to be a bit careful how you actually bend them. So I'm going to hold on to the printed area first. Oh this is, is a, a dog leg bend if you like into this one. So it goes up like that. Okay, and it's going to stick underneath, just confirm the place it's going to go to, just going to go underneath here. So what we do, we're going to get a tiny bit of super glue on the go, just like so. Okay, I'm going to place it on the actual part itself, rather than on the object. Okay, and then... We just remove this from its backing. I'm hoping this will. Stick in just like that. Giving us our very nicely done instrument panel, just like that. And as I say, if you were trying to really go around with a resin replacement, you're not gonna get that level of depth unless your painting is really second to none. But on the other hand though, it doesn't have that sort of three dimensional texture like a resin part or even the plastic does. So it's a bit of a trade off between the two. If you're happy on it, on the larger scales, um, sometimes um, you can get them just the dial faces go in, but there's lots of different ways to do it. But there we go, that gives us a very nice instrument panel all done just like that. Now the other bits we can get on with is really just bringing it all together. Um, so what we can do, we'll just clear these out of the way in just a moment. There's a couple more little bits to go on, but that's the major work of it all done. So as I say, we had the, the main frame area done, all sorted out, ready to go. The top part can go onto that now. So that's just going to sit right on like this. Now there should be little tabs for it to click into as well, these little pin marks sticking up. And the easiest one is the little um, wigwam effect go on the front, goes through the hole on the nose. So there we go, and once that is on, that gives us this type of effect. And that's our cockpit area, if you like, sort of done, minus the instrument panel and that. But if we have a look to see what we've got here, one very nicely detailed interior and then obviously that's going to come along shortly it's going to clip in making sure we've got all the right bits it comes a lot more forward than you think it would okay so that's how it's going to sort of sit it's roughly in there like that giving us a very nice cockpit detailed area we've still got to put a gun in there and a few little bits and pieces but obviously you could go around now and do a little bit more weathering to that a bit more spraying around i'm not going to put this rear gun on yet and things like that because obviously they're going to get in the way but that really completes our cockpit work of getting that area all together.